Box Two Box is back with another video. Millie, what are we doing today? Boys, the Premier League season is around the corner and you know what that means. It is prediction season. We're getting our Premier League predictions ready and you're going to tell us what you think of them. Woo! I am tired of watching friendlies. I want to watch some real ball. Me and Millie last season were the two most correct, by the way. By According the way. to you and Millie. Let's check the comments for that. Yeah, the comment, the comments literally said Millie was the most correct, but I also think I was the and most that's correct. what I thought. Millie was the most correct. And I was accused of having the lowest ball knowledge. Listen, I'm not the one asking the questions here, but we are going to randomize the teams with a spin. All I'm saying is that this year is the year. That's all I'm saying. I Every year is the year of Every year is the year, but this may actually We didn't get new owners. We didn't really upgrade many, much on any position except for Goldie. But this, but this is year is going to be the year. Anyway. Oh, don't worry about it. Millie, who are we picking? First up, we have Brighton. Here is where the boys put them on their tables. Two eights, two nines? I mean, I, I was surprised. I thought Firms was going to put them higher, to be honest. Why is that? Because all of last season, bro, Brighton, Brighton, Brighton. They're a hipster team. Yeah, but, but it's, And Firms is a hipster. <laughs> of course, but it's their first time in Champions League football. I don't think they're going to be able to compete in Prem and... Well, Rapidly. they're going to get knocked out in the, in the group stage. I, I, might, I might get some rebound for that. By the way, Firms lost his voice, so if you guys yeah, are apologies. struggling. <laughs> and I meant your Europa League, not Champions League. Firms was just too busy screaming at the Milan transfer budget and the team. Oh, terrible, Firms. I feel so bad for you. Loft his cheek. I'd be screaming too. Uh, I'm screaming of this joy. This is a Premier League video, Millie. Really. Yeah. <laughs> he just I'm, tried to do it. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I couldn't help myself, Varvar. But we do have the mid-table. Not really in competing for European competition, but they're right up there. If you lose McAllister and potentially Caicedo in the same year, you cannot come up to me and say they're going to be challenging for top seven, top six, and they, they're not getting back Colwell. So I, I agree. I agree. They're, I mean, they got worse in other positions, but when you have a young core, the core gets better. Ferguson getting better. Mitoma probably getting better. Same manager, like... Fun fact, last 12 games of last year's Premier League season, Mitoma had zero goals, one assist. Well, Mitoma's for the hipsters, but I think he's a decent player. He's okay. I agree with the boys. I just don't think that when you lose players of that caliber, it'll be difficult to bounce back and still compete. But here's the next spin. But hey, respect the Zerbi. That guy, that guy's cooking something special. Some 18-year-old is probably gonna spawn and... Uh... That, that is true, that is true. Up next, we have Vincent Company's men. Burnley just got promoted. Here is where the boys have them. Firms, I'm very happy to see you see the vision. It's not a great team on paper, but like you said, Vincent Company and his men, man. That's all you need. He they is the X factor, Paula. I think we both did our research because this guy could truly change the team. He had them playing excellent football. Whatever. Teams don't just come up to the Prem and play liquid footy. It doesn't just happen. You can't go to Man City, man. There's at least eight teams, nine teams here that they're not gonna be able to go and play this possession footy that they love playing. But I, I agree, think, I agree with that though. I agree with that, but I think Company is such an advanced manager that he's able to adapt to the Prem. He's been I, managing for one year. How do you know he's and so he got, advanced? He got he's 101 points in the championship. How That's crazy not, is you that? can't overlook that. Yes, but they were not playing, they were playing teams that wouldn't really try and play against them. In the Prem, every team is gonna try and like, be the aggressor. And my prediction and firm's prediction too is that he'll adapt. It, it'll, he'll adapt, exactly. I, I think he'll adapt, but it's going to be too late in the season. Important to note, none of us actually put them in relegation. So we actually all think that they're going to stay up next season. And honestly, I think that's going to be company's work. He'll do great. Here's the next spin. There is a realistic situation where they do get relegated. That because, is true. because who are they bringing in? Yes? I think. You know who they remind me of? Norwich of a couple of years ago because they played nice footy, dominated the championship, but they just kept buying young players to sell them on later. We'll, we'll see how it works out. The spin says Liverpool is up next. This is going to be controversial. Let's see where the boys put them. Bro, bro. Are we seeing this right, Paula? Fifth, they are not finishing in Champions League. This is my same prediction as last year. That you guys I'm call tired. Me I'm tired. No, no, no. Hear this. Let, let's Why? hear. Let's hear the logic. Last last year, you guys called me crazy for saying Thomas Tuchel was going to get sacked. One of the first managers sacked. What happened? He was one of the first managers. Sacked. A mistake. Not and it was Jurgen a mistake. Klopp will get sacked this year, that is or crazy. or leave. He will leave. 
crazy. The project is going nowhere, and all the players are just they're 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 no, they're going nowhere. All the players just don't make sense. The team was getting very good towards the end of the season. If they would have kept that form up for the entire season, they would have been in in, in competition for the top four. Mm -hmm. It's going to continue. And Klopp is an elite manager. We can't forget that. Klopp is a world class manager. They are in Europa League this season. We'll see how they manage the Prem and Europa League. They really don't do well when they're in multiple competitions. So. I put them fifth. I put them fifth like Varvar. I don't see these other teams being worse than them, unfortunately. Millie, they went to two finals and they competed with Man City. That's a very, very long time ago. Firms, Lukaku was worth 105 million two seasons ago. He's worth nothing now. I still think that's crazy. They are upgrading in every position and they're changing everything. Klopp has revolutionized this team. But what's upgrading? Like buying Darwin Nunez from two year, last year with Mane is an upgrade? Look, personally, that I think Darwin Nunez is getting... That's not but an that upgrade. was a year ago. Yeah. And, and it didn't pay dividends, obviously, because, I mean, they weren't, they weren't good last season. Nunez is going to show his worth this time. I think the biggest liability right now, it's crazy to say, but it's Van Dyke. Okay, I think gone. you have absolutely no... You're such a hipster. I, di I disagree. I disagree. I think, the, I think the center back, center back core is fine. Goalie's fine. Every position is fine. Th this is going to be a very competitive team. I almost wanted to put them in contentions for top two. Jurgen Klopp, have fun at, have fun at Bayern Munich in a year's time. Like I said, Liverpool is going to be controversial, but here's the next spin. I think you guys are nuts. The guys that put in five, you guys are nuts. Makes oh, yeah, fun. because the Liverpool team that's been underwhelming now for a couple of years is going to be very good. Yeah, makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. We're taking it easy now with Brentford. Let's see where the boys have them on the table. Not much to say. 10, so 10, 10. Solid mid-table team. That's what they've been. That's what they're always going to be. I might see them take a step back this year because, because I don't know, their project's not as exciting as it used to be. Because of Tony, yeah. Tony. That's the only reason. I would have put me. them higher if it wasn't. Exactly. Fun. Higher. Yeah, I think they have no real weakness. That's, that's their strength, I guess. As a mid-table club, they have no real weakness. And Tony is just an unfortunate event that But happened. Tony was extremely integral to that team. Yeah. Integral, but I don't think he's as good as people make him out to be. But it's okay. With the competition in the Prem, when you're not making very, very good signings, it's tough to keep up. And I just don't see Brentford keeping up the pace that they once had, even with Ivan Tony in the team. So for me, I put them just, they digressed a little bit, but they're still a mid-table club. Here's the next spin. If I was a betting man, oh. then uh, I think 10 is, a, 10 is an elite spot. Would you put over or under 10? If 10 was the line... i put over. Over? Over. Like, what do you mean over? Like, like over 10, like 11, 12. Oh, okay, okay. okay I was okay, about to, to offer make sure you, there. Yeah, I was about to offer you a bet there, Paolo, but Up next, we have the new boys in town. Looks like they're going to need a new stadium, but it is Luton Town. Let's see where the boys have them on the board. You guys are disrespecting them. I put them last, but you guys are disrespecting them. <laughs> How so? Last. Be people are saying they might be the worst Premier League team of all time. I think that's just disrespectful. Well, I, I got to see it. I got to see it before I say anything. I think they're going to show up, put put like performances that Sean Dyche would be proud of and not be a rollover win. I think they're going to be, I think they're going to be okay. But they're like, how do you base this off? Like their, their home form is not good. Their away form is not good. It was good enough to get promoted. Well, they did it through the playoff. Uh, imagine if you're getting smoked by teams like Burnley in the championship. Yeah. You think you're going to pull up to Old Trafford and, and, and compete? I don't think so. I think yeah, it's but, the leads but this year. Play styles, like Burnley's not ready to... They're, they're, they, look, Burnley probably will do better in Luton Town. 100%. But the play style's more translatable for Luton Town than Burnley, in my opinion. That, yeah, there's some truth to that. Honestly, I think it's great for the Premier League that they have a team like this, homegrown. People are just gravitating towards that team, but unfortunately, we do have them all getting relegated at the end of the season. Here's the next spin. W watch out, because they might surprise some people. I don't think so. You know what I wouldn't be surprised about? I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a six-team relegation battle this season, same like last season. Oh, that's, that's obvious with the Prem. It's not Serie A here. The spin has given us Chelsea, and this one is going to be crazy. So let's see where the boys put them on their tables. Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. I was between fighting for the top four or like 10th. There's no in between. Them. That's why yeah, I, I agree. put them No one's going to speak about how I put them fourth after basically I'm the biggest Chelsea hater in all of humanity. I, I tend to often overlook your opinions, unfortunately. Explain. In my opinion, they're going to finish fourth. Like, What track record do you have to base this off of? 
I mean, Chelsea have been a pretty consistent club. Maybe the most, after Man City, the most consistent year by year for making Champions League other than last year. Fair, fair. And selling players like Havertz for 70 million is a, a steal. And then getting offers for Gallagher, like selling players. I, I think that they're going to do good. And the players that they bought, I think, are pretty good. Look, you rip Arsenal for not having leaders, for not having veteran players because you have Casemiro and whoever else you have, Varane. <laughs> Who does Chelsea have in that team that's a leader? Thiago Silva. Pretty okay. big leader. Okay, he's on crutches. But yeah, anybody else? Um, Nobody. It's, my, it's my problem is that Posh is coming into this team. Sure, he, he might be the right man to do it, but they're always injured. They're, the right back is always injured. The left back is always injured. Malo Gusto, backup right back with Rhys James. That's pretty good it's, right back. It's coming. tough. Like, Rhys James, full health. Like That's a very competitive. And then left back, you can't really talk because they have they have Chilwell. And then always they also injured. have what? He's always injured. Okay, have, they, they have Ian Matson. Sure. They have Lewis Hall. They're, they're not bad players. The, I might rip them, but they're not Man City quality, but they're not bad players. Chelsea is a wild card because some days they may be on their game, but other times it's, you could tell they're all disjointed and they're not playing as a unit. It's going to be a tough season for them. I still think they're in that mode of transition, but I mean, if Varvar's right, they could maybe push for Champions League, but I just don't see it happening. There are better, player, there are better players and teams than them. I'm just saying every year there's the one team that sneaks into top four every single year. And I think this year it's going to be Chelsea. We will have to see how Chelsea does this season, but these are our predictions. Here's the next spin. I don't think Pochettino's a good manager. You don't think? I don't think he is a good manager. He's a reliable manager. He's not a great manager. I think he's just all right. I think he's the perfect man for Chelsea. Pochettino is going to have a lot on his plate this season, so we'll see how he does. But up next, we have Aston Villa. Are they a top 10 competitor? Let's see what the boys have. One of the best teams of the second half of the season last year is not making Europe this season. I got them eight. No. That's wild. No. Yeah. Number six? I have number six. Number six. Pau Torres, Diaby, Tielemans. Stacked. They're just getting better and better with an already good team. Yeah. So. And a good manager. Unai Emery is one of the best. I think we all agree they are a mid-table team. Up or lower, it's debatable. I have them ninth. Unai Emery is a top, top coach. One of the most talented in the Prem. But like, my argument goes for all the other teams. There's better teams than them. That's just what it is. If, if any of you guys are looking for a Prem team to get into this season, I would say Aston Villa. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be the Brighton of last season. Just youngsters balling together, attacking footy. Aston Villa are definitely one to watch next season. Here's the next spin. I'm not saying eighth is bad. Eighth is a, still a good season in the Premier League. It's just, I don't know if they're going to have the quality to finish above those above them. I, I think, think we're underrating. Yeah, them. they can consistently beat teams, in my opinion, like Brighton, like Chelsea, like teams I don't around their, they can. their class. And Emery is a big team killer, so I don't think it's crazy to say. The spin has given us Nottingham Forest. Bit of a cult club last season. Let's see where the boys have them this season. Nottingham Forest are going to be pretty, pretty decent this year. I don't think it's going to be... Sometimes last year they were like... 10th, 11th, 12th. I don't think it's going to be like that. But they're, they just bought Anthony Alanga, who... A good signing. I think he's going to be pretty good for them. Well, how many signings did they get last summer to do what they did last year? Exactly. But they're, they're building off of that base now, which I think is a yeah. pretty strong base. I don't think they're going to be involved with relegation at all, to be honest. I think they, they'll be fighting for the top half of the table or like the middle area. But definitely not downwards. Cooper's still the manager, right? Yeah. Yep. It's just nothing special. There's nothing special about the way he plays. I agree, Pala. I don't think the team is solid enough to push for that bottom mid-table, top mid-table. I do see them fighting a bit for relegation. It's going to be a dogfight down there. And like we said, last season, there was a ton of turnover with players. This season, it seems a bit more solid, but other teams have gotten stronger. That's just what it is. I know you said before about Burnley, you know, versus when they play versus good teams, they can't play the same attacking footy they play. But these teams, like when we're talking 16, 17, relegation, those are teams that they need to get points versus the relegation teams exactly. consistently. And then they'll stay up. Bit of a mixed bag with Nottingham Forest. Here's the next spin. Yeah, but having a front three of Morgan Gibbs-White, Anthony Alanga and Brendan Johnson, or even throwing in Awoni type stuff, that's a good front three, especially for their level. Like that's a very, very good front three. 100%. We'll see. The spin has given us a big boy for today. Manchester City. Boys, I better not see any 
No Champions Leagues here. Let's see what they got. I just, there's just something inside of me that told me that Varvar was going to say something dumb. It's not dumb. You think that, it, like my boy said, eras come to an end. They, they just do. And Man City, after losing, they're going to, they might lose Kyle Walker. That's a big, big loss. As if he played last season. What do you mean? That's as if he played last season. As if he played in the Prem last season. He wasn't he as integral. He didn't play half the season. Mares gone. That's a big loss, but they're replacing Very him. Very big loss. Gundogan lost. I'm just Gundogan, naming key Gundogan, players Gundogan that they're losing. Loss. But Gundogan was, at one point, a rotation player. Like, no. this team, it's, 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 this is a solid team. They, it, no, Gundogan was, was probably a big loss, but Kovacic could complement that loss. You're acting I like I said they're finishing seventh place. I no. put them second place. Eras do come to an end, yes. Liverpool is closer to the end of an era than City. City just came Liverpool's off a era ended a decade ago, bro. The era is not going to end until Pep leaves. When you have Pep in that team, you cannot doubt them to lose a title. It's just, it's just written in the stars, especially coming off a of treble. You know Pep is eyeing the next season to do that again. I don't see them digressing. They're going to be the outright winners in my books. Do you guys think they're going to be able to do a, a treble back-to-back? -back? No. The, they're not winning the Prem. So how does that well, make you think that they're going to win the treble? That's in your eyes. I think... I wonder what Paula and Millie think, because I think, I think they Real's have the potential to Re do I think Real's winning the seal. Okay. That's a lie. I don't see them winning the treble. I think they're going to slip up somewhere. They may win Champions League, but let's say an FA Cup, they have a disaster class of a performance. But that's just my opinion. Here's the next spin. People forget for last year, most of last year, City were not even leading the Prem. But they they weren't it. as dominant as people made them out to be last year. If we were talking about Centurion City, I would say not even close. They were way ahead of everyone. They were not way ahead of everyone last year. I refuse to believe it. A bit more controversial than initially thought. Not everyone had them as the winner. But up next, we have Everton. Let's see where the boys have them this season. They got Danjuma. Good signing. But that's about it. We're really moving the needle over Danjuma. That's, that's who we're hyping up right now. I mean, did you hear my enthusiasm when I said that? <laughs> Everton just, they're not signing anyone of note. They have a good team though. What, define a good team, a good enough team For to finish 17th. Well, I don't think they're gonna finish 17th because of Sean Dyche, but I do think they have a pretty good mid-table team. I don't know about that, Firms. That they struggled last season. They're not getting the same investment as they did last season or the season before. It's gonna be tough to keep up with those guys, but we have them at 15th, so they won't be fighting for relegation, but they're not going for those top spots. Like, if I were an Everton fan, there's no optimism. Like, there's nothing to I look agree. forward to. Well, you're you're yeah. battling with AC Milan for targets, for transfer targets. You, you, you've taken a little bit of a they step back. They got rejected for Atalanta by El Bilal Torre. You know how, like, crazy you have to yeah. be? I don't think Sean Dyche is... Um, He's not appealing as a manager to play. Yeah, him. exactly. He is a proper English footy lad. Here's the next spin. You know what a crazy agenda would be? That everything gets relegated. They will. The I, first am, time ever. I mean, they're 17th. For me, they... I think it's inevitable. It's not crazy. It's not possible for Everton to ever get relegated. Yeah? That's crazy. Like Varvar said, doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of optimism for Everton fans. However, we have Fulham up next. And there might actually be something to look forward to for Fulham and their fans. So let's see where the boys have them on the table. I'm surprised. I'm surprised I put, I'm, I'm the one that put them the highest. I rated Mitrovic a lot last season. I, I had him in FPL. That's a big step back. Main goal scorer, but. And they haven't really replaced him with him. No. Uh, that's the problem. They signed Raul Jimenez from I Wolves. don't think that's a good replacement. I don't think either, but they replaced him. And I, honestly, this is one of my favorite projects in the Premier League, to be honest. What, what do you like so much about it? Robert? I like that they're bringing in, well, they haven't signed them yet, technically, but Calvin Bassey, he's a very good player. And he, when he was at Rangers, he, yeah, was, Rangers, he was a very, very good. good player. I'm not familiar with his game. And then there's underrated players like, like Kenny Tete, who is very good. He's good, And yeah. then they're looking in potentially to Hudson Adoy. They're battling Lazio. I don't know. I think, I think it's a pretty good team. I have them 13th, not bad. But if they didn't, have, if they didn't lose Mitrovic, would have been like 10th, 9th. Fulham, like we said, there's a lot of optimism there. Unfortunately, no Mitrovic, but Prem, there's always a surprise. And I think Fulham has a potential to be that surprise. Here's the next spin. They're losing some experience. Like, Willian is not the best player ever. But, but he was, I mean, like, he's good. You know, versus Man U, Willian was. He, he balled was, out. Yeah, I remember he that game. He balled too. out. 
He was all right. No, he balled no, out. He, he was cooking. You guys. Yeah. Even against Chelsea, he cooked. Up next, we have another promoted team in the Premier League. It is Sheffield United. Will they stay up, though? That is the question. So let's see where the boys have them on their tables. It's sad that they're all relegated for us. It's, it's pretty sad. Why? Because... What's going on? What's going on at Chef? They're, they're trying to keep keep some of their star players. I mean, like, Illaman and Dai. I don't know if you guys remember him. Senegalese national. Sen well, Senegalese national, but he was... He started off playing for Rising Ballers FC. I don't know if really? you guys knew that. I did yeah. not know that. And he was one of the one of the championship's best player. But I, I think it's sad they're going to go down on my list, but it would not surprise me at all if they stayed up. We have this idea that the Prem, you know, they get injected so much money once they make it up. Mm -hmm. What do they do with that money? They haven't, they haven't purchased anybody. But their core is already decent. It's just a I bunch of Scottish, English well, lads. No, they have a pretty experienced core that already played in the Prem, I believe. So, Oliver Norwood was one of the championship's best players last year also. So I think so. as a fit, they're fine. It's just, you know, like they have to really rely on that home form. If they could lock down their stadium and just kind of steal points here and there, they could do fine. But you know what their manager's name is? It's where they're going to be in the table. You know what their manager's name is? What is it? Hecking Bottom. Paolo, it's a terrible joke. Like from said, if they could get a couple points here and there, they could fight for relegation, maybe stay up, but... It's not looking good. So here's the next spin. It is indeed not looking good, bro. Did you guys know that they had more than two goals per game at home? I didn't know that, but that's going to drop down to 0 0.2 in we'll the Prem. See. Boys, the spin has given us one of the biggest in the Prem. It uh, is the biggest. Oh my God. I think that gives it away. It is Manchester United. I don't know where the boys are going to be putting them. So let's see. I'm going to start tapping Bro, my ears. no way, man. I'm going to stop. We've got to close the ears, firms. Close the ears. Fifth, you actually think we're going to miss Premier League after improving? What did you improve? Maybe the most in the Premier League. This Every summer. other team improved just as much as you, if no, not more. Exactly. You, think, you think a goalie, a goalie and Mason Mount is going to change your club? We went from the worst goalie of all time to one of the best last season in the entire the world. Gea was a better shot stopper than Onana. I think you're ridiculous. No, I, I don't think I'm ridiculous. And to say one, bro, come on. I think that's crazy to say, Varvar. They didn't upgrade any striker. When we're about to buy one of the best wonder kids in all of Europe in that position. I'm gonna do it because I don't know if, I don't know if you guys believe Varvar either. If someone put a gun to your head and said, do you truly believe that Man United have yes. a chance? And they have a lie detector yes. on you. Yes. You actually believe that? Listen, you guys saw I put them second. They're not winning the Prem, but they are giving City a run for their money. I wouldn't go as far to say that they're missing Champions League altogether because I find that's ridiculous. I find they have one of the strongest teams in the Prem, bar none. So to put them fifth, Pala, it's a little shaky, but second, I feel like that's their sweet spot. If we, Millie, if, if Millie, we, if we don't compete on? with City, this is a failure of a season. You've heard okay, it so here first. I can already no. tell you, I'll tell you in advance, you failed. Millie, okay. to put number two, you, I, somewhere in that spiel that you just said, you said that Man United would compete with Manchester City for one. What, we, what are you guys on? We are... Look, you don't want to hear the truth. I think There's that, no truth. There's no truth. We this is are all also... Lies. Look, listen, listen. We are also one of the top three or four favorites for the Champions League. I'm sitting here with two brain dead top, people. Top three and or firms. four. Top three I, or I'm four not in the Champions League. I don't listen anymore. It's, what? It's, I don't listen anymore. I'm not I don't even listen lying. Anymore. I don't care. I don't care. Oh my God. I don't know if this is going to be a make or break season for Ten Hag and United, but this is a very, very important season. We have to see how they do in Champions League and especially in the Prem. Here's an X spin. That's what you guys wild. didn't see was the passion that we had off camera. That's wild. You guys That's did not see the discussion we just had. That's wild. Milan players are throwing a conversation. United players, Juve players, luckily Inter players were unharmed in this conversation. There's no one worthy of the Chiesa got some strays shot at him, even he's though he's the same age as- 26 and washed. And he's four years younger than, four days younger than Rashford. Leal is and better than Rashford. Yeah, okay. Hopefully we can, I live in I hope, La La Land. I hope we can slice some clips into there. La La Land. Fellas, we gotta calm it down. We got Crystal Palace up next. This one should be an easy one. So we'll see where the boys have them on their tables. What do you guys see in Palace with, with Roy Hodgson's that I don't see? Roy Quality. Hodgson's a good manager. Yeah. They're all good managers. No, Roy Hodgson is legit a good manager. I understand your point about Steve Cooper, but Roy Hodgson's a good manager. He's and, experienced. And who do they, who do they replace 
that made their transfer market make them you know, decent, competitive. They well, didn't sell anyone. That's the thing. They might lose Olize, but for me, like Olize, I was never his biggest fan. Zaha. But and Zaha, 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 Zaha was has been washed for a big, big. Minute. He's been washed. Yeah. Yeah, he's been washed. Who follow Premier League? No, he's been washed. You watch too much but Serie A, bro. I think that actually helps Crystal Palace because Eze is actually going to be the main man this time, and he has potential. Like yeah, they have young ballers and all, but Zaha was Zaha was too important to that team. When you think of Crystal Palace, you think of Wilfred Zaha. It's a shame that he won't be on the team this season, but I don't really see it affecting their overall season. I think they're still going to do okay. They do have some top young guns that are ready to make the difference on the team. Here's an next spin. You guys have shiny new toy syndrome. Well, what's that, Barbara? Oh, tell no. me. Tell me the You guys thing think you that just because they're not signing anyone, does that doesn't mean that they're going to get worse. But these but are your words, not mine. The Premier League is the best league in the world. And if you're not improving, then you're dropping down. Do you know where Crystal Palace finished last year? I don't, need, I don't need to know. They finished 11th. Yeah. Exactly. So what makes you think that they're going to get insanely worse where they're going to finish either? Like in my opinion, they're, they're just going to stay where they were at. Up next, we'll have a team that will potentially fight for relegation. So let's see where the boys have them. It is Bournemouth. 18. Two 18. people here actually think Bournemouth are going to get relegated. That's a wild 19. Shot. I got 19. 19? Yeah, 19. Oh my God, that gets even worse. How do you think that a team that surprised in their first year in the Premier League are going to get worse after a good summer transfer window? And they got better. Yeah, exactly. Just because you have a Spanish manager that kind of sounds like Pep Guardiola, it, it just doesn't do anything for me. Yeah, but that's Spanish manager has been stepping up his career. E right, how old is he, e Iraola? I'm not sure, but that Same right. just Chiesa, I think. <laughs> so he must be like 35. Yeah. Bournemouth are making moves in the transfer market. Listen, Justin Cliver doesn't really move me personally, but I think for Bournemouth, it is a solid addition. Unfortunately, I just don't see them getting saved. I think they're going to be relegated. They're a strong team-ish, but in my opinion, it's not enough. Here's the next spin, though. I don't even think they would have won the championship if they were there last season. I think like teams like Burnley is just like that's such a, such a stronger team. Bournemouth is so far ahead of yeah. what Burnley I, I is at right now. It's they have not an exciting even close. And new manager, like that's a new ma that's my one thing. New manager, no proven I though. We disagree. The spin has given us a gem. It is Arsenal. I'm excited to see where Pala puts them. It's going to be a big question mark. But let's see where the rest of the boys have put them. So we have we have two clowns and and two ball knowledge, two men with ball knowledge. If I could have put them one, I would have. But I actually respect City, and I'm not delusional like someone else. You you just think that oh because United don't play juega de posesión like uh, like Pep Guardiola, mm. they're not going to be as good as Arsenal. Arsenal are good. They're not a bad team. But last year they didn't really have to worry about any other competitions because they got knocked out so early in uh, FA Cup and Carabao Cup. So. I mean, they're going to have actual games to play this year, and their depth is not that good. And they lost Granit Xhaka. Uh, so whoa, what's, whoa. what's not good about our depth? Yeah, I disagree with that. I don't even like Arsenal that much, and I find they've been improving depth-wise. Improving? Saka. Havertz, Havertz is an improvement. He's a Champions League winner. He that's, stinks. That, this guy reeks. That's Havertz experience stinks. that you're bringing in. Experience. Does he seem regardless, like Havertz regardless. is some leader? We're talking about real footy here. The only, you're talking about depth. You said depth, okay? The only position I'll give you that we don't have depth is Saka. And, but Saka's shown that he can stay healthy. And you think season. Ramsdale is a, a very good goalie where he's like. I think Ramsdale, uh, Ramsdale is, in, is one goalie. of the best goalies. I think he's all right. No, I he's very he's, good. He's all no. right. Onana or Ramsdale? Onana. Okay. Onana. Okay. Onana. I'm not delusional. Okay. Okay. I'm, that's all right. If you know, you know, I do not rate Havertz at all. However, I do rate Declan Rice. And that is an addition Arsenal will have for the rest of the season. He will be a baller. And I don't know if it's going to take them over United, but boys, do you think they have that juice to beat United? United is not even in the conversation, Millie. People want, people want to bring up on Twitter, people want to bring up Havertz, 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 you know, bus, bus, bus. Okay, he can be a bus. That's no problem. He's, he's, not, he's not going to be that guy. Declan Rice, that's, that's enough He's said. He's the real addition. Exactly. But you see, these new additions, Havertz, 70 million. Declan Rice, 100 plus million. Are they really world class? Personally, I think Declan Rice is world class, but Havertz, it really just depends on the day. Boys, what do you think? Declan Rice, automatically world class. Yeah. Havertz, Champions League winner. Like, He's not world class, though. I don't understand how you can say a player. Like, I'm all for the Declan Rice hype train. 
But you cannot say a player who has yet to even make a Champions League appearance is world class. You said he was world class. I I, I think he's insane. You said but he was world I class way say, before me. I, yeah, but you cannot say he is of that level to compete with City without a single Champions League appearance. You he, can't. Was, he was doing that at West Ham. A single Champions League appearance. That's all I ask for. We'll just have to see how Arteta's project translates this season. Could be better, could be worse, but we shall see. Here's the next spin. Let's not forget Saka, Odegaard, they're still balling out. And well, we have like three world-class players. And if exactly. you want to consider Gabriel, four world-class players. Okay, no. Up next, we have a mid-table contender. We have Wolves. Let's see where the boys put them on their tables. Guys, guys, I know Wolves has been getting worse and worse every season. They just lost Ruben Neves, but... 19. They're horrendous in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I think they're very bad. They have nothing going on for their team. I agree. No, they're, they are stinky. I put them, that's why I put them 16, but 19? If Raul Nieto doesn't come back and have like one monster season, but yeah. I don't even think he's going to do that, then dead in the water, 19. They're giving me like Southampton vibes. Like there's no progression and just every year they're just going backwards, you know? You actually think they're going to get relegated this season? I don't think so. Not just relegated, like embarrassingly relegated. And... Lopetegui is not that bad. He's pretty bad. And he has not been good since he came to Wolves. That I can agree, but Lopetegui is not a horrible manager. For me, it really just depends how they start the season. If they start terribly Lopetegui out, unfortunately, I'm going to have to agree with Firms and Varvar. They, they will be struggling in relegation. But here's the next spin. Look, I wrote down a stat that they were statistically 20th in XG. Like they had the worst attack in the Prem. That's fair, and they just lost a main attacker, so it's only going to get worse. Yeah, it's going to get worse. The spin has given us a controversial team. It is Tottenham. A lot of turmoil, a lot of changes. Let's see where the boys put them for this season. If Harry Kane is gone, they're... It bumps 13, down a couple of... 12, positions. 13. I agree. Like that. Jungman Son fell off. I mean, I I, 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 they bought a couple of nice players, but not looking too good in my opinion i think tottenham have gone away with getting those managers high profile high drama managers you had Mourinho, you had conte those guys are out of there you have a guy push to i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing it right but that guy is a no-nonsense manager he is a locker room manager and that's what tottenham need they need to strap down their players and tell them get your head in the game and that's what they brought him in for Exactly. They, I want Millie they, as my manager. Yeah, Millie, yeah, give a pep talk. <laughs> you gotta die to get three points. <laughs> no. But yeah, Ange is probably gonna instill his mentality. I think that's the biggest plus of this uh, management. And Madison, Madison came in. That's a good player. That's true. That is true. Boys, the tables are looking pretty full. Only a couple teams left. Here's the next spin. At least they aren't the worst club in London. Who is Chelsea? Pala asked for a London club, he will be getting a London club. It is West Ham. Not that many places left on the table, so we'll see where they put them. I have them 12th, but this, is, this is one of my shocker, could be relegated teams. And you put them- 100%. I put them 11th, last I, minute change. I don't think that they will turn out to be as bad as they could be, but losing Declan Rice, I huge i don't think it's that crazy i think that is pretty crazy i think that's they're trying they're trying to do and i don't mean to bring milan into but it's a perfect example okay they lose tonali who does a lot of stuff for them just like declan rice he does a lot of facets of the game and they try and bring two three midfielders who could do all of that those two three midfielders can't all be on the same field at the same time. You well, can't play, play with 12 no, players or 13 players. If but, they're playing a 4-2-3-1, then they can't directly replace Declan Rice. But if they change the formation... And they have striker problems. I think it's just overall their their team is not complete at and all. Antonio was injured for a good part of last season. Doesn't convince me. As the main striker? And No, Antonio's good. West Ham struggled last season. Their saving grace was the Conference League. But that was mainly Declan Rice. And to lose a player like that, as you guys said, it's difficult to replicate and replace, but I still have them squeaking into the top 10. Varvar, I might have to kind of agree with you there. They seem like that type of team where they could either be 10th or they could be 17th, 18th. It's, it, it's too wild to guess. They still have some solid players in their team. Paqueta's a good player. They still have, Suchek is still in the midfield. They were in a relegation battle for most of the season. Yeah. You don't realize that. Huge striker problems. And with 19 teams down, we have one remaining and it is Newcastle. 
This is one of the most controversial teams in the Premier League. We'll see where the boys put them. I mean, there was only one spot left in all of our slots. Yeah. And this is, this is perfect for me. Newcastle at four. Look, it would not surprise me if they finish in Champions League again. I'll preface that. I, I know I wrote six, but it would not surprise me if they finished top four again. They just don't have the depth to play Champions League, Premier League, FA Cup. Yeah. They, they just don't have the depth. They just brought in Tonali. They just brought in Barnes. Uh, those are decent players. Yeah, but, but is that really moving the needle exactly. saying we're there in top four every single year? I don't think so. The issue is that there's other teams that seem like they're in a state of decline and trying to get back up. But Newcastle have been on the upward trajectory for the last year and a half, two years. So it's difficult to justify putting someone like Liverpool or Tottenham who have a lot of turnover and turmoil above them. Newcastle are a very, very strong team. I think they'll make Champions League again. It's not crazy to say that, Millie, because I could see them finishing anywhere from three all the way down to, let's say, like seven or eight. So uh, that's it's just, wild. there's just a lot of potential for them. You think they could contend for top two? No, no, no I don't. I no. think there's a limit to it. But something that really helps them, which I didn't mention before, was the fact that they're so they're so such an easy team to integrate new transfers into. Exactly. We saw that with Botman. We saw that with Guimarish back like maybe two years ago. Yeah. I think Tonali and Barnes are going to like slide in and within five with match weeks, they're going to yeah, be good. I agree with that. I don't think Tonali is going to be good right away, but he will be good. And there we have our predictions for the upcoming Premier League season. As always, thank you so much for the support you guys have given us. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. We may have something big coming up down the road, so please stay tuned. Boys, any final words? Let us know in the comments down below which prediction you agree with the most. You guys are the GOATs. You guys and are number one. You guys are number one, but I can guarantee you Man United is not number five. No, my. Voice crack. I, you deserve that voice crack. <laughs>